Almost 50 years after the last Apollo mission to the moon's surface, NASA has established a program that promises to land humans on unexplored lunar regions and eventually the surface of Mars. And it all starts with Artemis 1. And it's no coincidence that the Artemis program is named after Apollo's twin sister in Greek mythology. Artemis will continue the legendary Apollo program's legacy of sending crewed missions to the moon, but in a different way. Meanwhile, the crewed spacecraft under development is known as Orion. Orion is one of the most recognized constellations in the sky, and in classical mythology, he is Artemis's hunting companion. The Artemis program's goals include landing diverse crews of astronauts on the moon and exploring the moon's shadowy south pole for the first time. The ambitious project also aims to establish a permanent presence on the moon and develop reusable systems that will allow humans to explore Mars and possibly beyond. NASA is currently leading a number of space missions under the Artemis program. The first of three Artemis missions, Artemis 1. This will be an unmanned test flight around and beyond the moon in 2022. On August 29th, NASA was forced to abort its first attempt to launch Artemis 1 due to an issue with one of the Space Launch System's rocket engines. It was challenging for the engine to reach the required temperature range for takeoff. On September 3rd, a second launch attempt was made, but it failed because of a hydrogen leak in the quick disconnect, which connects the liquid hydrogen fuel feed line to the SLS. 2024 Artemis 2, the Orion spacecraft carrying the first four Artemis astronauts, will carry the crew farther from Earth than any other crew has ever gone. The crew will fly past the moon during the roughly 10-day mission, then return to Earth while testing the systems of the spacecraft while carrying people. 2025's Artemis 3 mission will send the first female and first person of color to the moon to construct research on the lunar surface for a week. Since Apollo 17 in 1972, Artemis 3 will be the U.S. Space Agency's first crewed moon landing mission. The selected astronauts for the first Artemis moon missions will most likely fly to the moon's south pole. This area has a lot of potential because it's thought to have the most water ice. If we can extract this water, it could be used to extend human exploration into space, whether it's a human hydration source, rocket fuel resource, or equipment cooling system. One of the most important moves in the journey is when the team will check the Shackleton Crater, which is a large dip on the lunar surface, stretching about 12 miles. Due to the crater's persistent shade, its lower temperatures make it a good candidate for ice development. In fact, these permanently dark areas have some of the coldest temperatures in the solar system. Although water may be found on the moon's lit surfaces, an area likely to have the greatest abundance of water is the best place to begin looking for additional natural resources. The launch of Artemis 1 from Kennedy Space Center, or KCS on Florida's Atlantic coast, was scheduled for Tuesday, September 27th, as recently as last Friday, September 23rd. That was still the plan, though NASA officials emphasized that they were keeping a close eye on Tropical Depression 9 in the Caribbean. As of late Friday night, Tropical Depression 9 had strengthened into Tropical Storm Ian, and it was forecast to continue strengthening. It's heading north, and the National Hurricane Center says that all available data suggests it will make landfall in Florida sometime around midweek next week. So stay tuned for our latest news as we await confirmation of whether or not this will be the third attempt to launch the Artemis 1 mission. Let us know what you think in the comments section below. And as always, don't forget to like, subscribe, check out our previous videos, and visit our website if you love reading at www.nasaspacenews.com. Thanks for watching.